Hey guys, this is Kevin from Kevin Hates Everything, and this week we're going over Buffalo Wild Wings and my Disney trip with Frank. Stick around, enjoy the show. So hey guys, what's up? Uh, welcome to another edition of Kevin Hates Everything. I got a really good show for you. Frank is going to absolutely love this one. Uh, tried to get him to sit in today, but schedules just didn't work out. So we're going to go without him, and I'm going to do my best on trying to tell this story. But anyway, so Frank's family and my family, uh, we both have Disney passes, and we decided to go to Disney World. As you know from watching this show, it is my favorite place on earth. So we talk and we say, hey, let's go get some dinner beforehand because, eh, let's face it, food can be a little expensive at Disney World. So figured, hey, we'll go to Buffalo Wild Wings. Now, let me preface this by saying I have not had a whole lot of good experiences at Buffalo Wild Wings. In fact, I think they may intentionally be slow in order to sell more beer. So Frank goes, hey, let's go to Buffalo Wild Wings. And I said, hey, that'll be all right. Let's do it. So I'm thinking I'm going to get me a mess of wings, like really go in and say, forget the low calorie diet. This is going to be a treat to myself. Like I'm pumped about this. And I think Frank is too, because I don't think you can eat uh, fried wings on a keto diet. So he's probably pumped too. We get there, the place is literally like empty. Uh, might be fifth of capacity, third at best. And I'm pushing it by saying a third. We go to sit down, there is four kids and uh, three adults. So when we go to get sat, they ask how many will there be? And I said, three adults, four kids. So we get to the table and this should have just let us know how this whole thing was gonna go. So of course we end up with one kids menu and the rest, six, for those out there wanting the math, adult menus. I figure, eh, no big deal. We'll let the waitress know when she gets here. But Judging by my past at Buffalo Wild Wings and the terrible service they give, I should have known what else was coming. So, let's get into it. So we sit down and we order some food. Everybody gets pretty much the typical Buffalo Wild Wings food, except for my daughter who gets macaroni and cheese because without macaroni and cheese, she wouldn't survive in this world. So, we got a whole bunch of wings, we got some macaroni and cheese, pretty much, you know, nothing abnormal, especially for a restaurant that that's what they specialize in. So. An hour goes by, and I am not joking when I say an hour because I sent a text when we first got into the restaurant, and it was an hour later that Frank finally gets up out of the chair, goes and tries to find the manager and ask, hey, um, it's been an hour, you're only at about a third capacity, what's the deal? We figured we'd let Frank handle it because I'm not the nicest person in the world and Frank has a much better demeanor when it comes to this stuff. So. I stayed at the table for good reason. They say, oh, we're sorry, it's coming right out. Well, we get the food. And by we, I don't mean we. So the kids comes out first. And my daughter complains about everything So when it comes to food. So she tries her macaroni and cheese and says, it's chewy, I hate it. Well, that's happened before and typically it's just because she doesn't want to eat it. So Frank's kids, Blake and Ava, order some wings, a salad, and some fries. Pretty typical. That all comes out. As usual, the kids' stuff does come out first, so we figure, hey, it's, it's good to go now. We'll be fine. It took a little while, but everybody expects that going to B-dubs, as they call it. Well, then here's where it starts getting a little bad. So Morgan gets her food. So does Janet and Frank. Janet looks over at Frank and goes, Frank, this stuff isn't even hot. So we just waited an hour. For what? For you to set it in the window and let it get cold? So I'm sitting there wondering, you know, what's going on. And because I haven't got served anything at this point. And Frank is absolutely angry at this point. And obviously I am too. So the waitress comes back and goes, is everything good? No, it's not. I don't have my food. Frank has cold food. And Morgan has chewy, nasty, boneless wings. So. Janet reaches over and tests out Blake and Ava's wings. They're cold too. Not a big deal for kids because they won't eat anything hot anyway. So we let that slide. Waitress goes, oh my gosh, it's not my fault. That's her first literal words out of her mouth. Um, customer service 101, 
that's not how you deal with the situation. Secondly, the manager who has come over because Frank went and got him is saying, okay, we're going to get this all out now. I'm at the point now that when I get this mad, I can't eat because my adrenaline comes up and it's done. Like I am oh, Hulkinator at this point. So with that being said, I was livid. I have no food. My wife has chewy half cold wings. Janet has all cold wings that she's sharing with Frank. So Frank's upset because now he has cold wings. So their way of fixing this is they go and they take all the wings, okay, to the back. We're thinking, hey, they're going to toss those. They're going to make us some new ones. They come back up front and say, hey, guys, here's your wings. They're the same ones. They microwave the wings. I'm not joking on this. And then they're trying to say, oh, well, we'll give you your drinks for free. Now we're at about an hour and 20 minutes. We've had Fast Passes. Those of you who do not know, Disney has a service called Fast Passes so that you can pre-arrange to go on a ride and not wait in line. It's the only way to do it, really. And without them, I can't stand Disney. With them, it's a magical dream come true. Anyways, back to the story. So, Frank tries out his food. He is livid at this point. He goes and gets the manager again, which comes back and he goes, I'm really sorry, guys. Uh, what can we do for you? And I'm like, hey, I would have really liked my food. And he's like, well, I'll get it made. And I'm like, no, because at this point, like, just knock the cost of those cold re-microwave wings down and, you know, make those free. And don't worry about my food because I can't even eat anyways at this point because I'm literally livid. And I'm going to get out of here. You would think that that would be where the story ends, but if you thought that, you were wrong. And when I come back, we'll get into that. It's back to the story. We are at the wonderful Buffalo Wild Wings, and as you know, service has not been going that well. Um, I guess the manager was trying to do a good thing and said, hey guys, we're going to go ahead and get that one. He says this to Frank. We're going to give that guy back there his wings to go so he can have it with him, and we're not going to charge him for it. Frank responds with, that's probably the worst idea you could ever have because now you're going to make him take stinky wings into his car that are going to sit there the whole time while he's at Disney. And when he comes back out from the park, all you're going to do is piss him off because now he's going to have a stinky car. Frank was right because the car would have been stinky. And the worst part is, is it would have been Morgan's car that was stinky. And that's way worse than my car being stinky because mine's always stinky. So... <laughs> Anyways, the guy finally just, you know, kind of just gives up, gives us most of our meal for free. Believe it or not, we did tip because we are ordinary guys and we understand that things happen. Although I feel like they happen all the time at Buffalo Wild Wings. And again, you would probably think this story is over, but it's not. So we drive uh, to Disney and we get out of the car. Everybody gets on the monorail. Everything's going fine. We get into the park, everything's good. And we're here in our second part of our journey at my favorite place in the world. With empty bellies, because I can hate Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> Frank, Frank was mad that I made him eat salad last week, so or a couple weeks ago, so he made me not eat at all. We'll get into that on the show. We have some fast passes that are about to run out because of the fact that, obviously, um, our food was late, so we're late getting to the park. So we have to run to our first stop, which is Pirates of the Caribbean. Everything goes great. We go in, ride's wonderful, other than everybody got soaked, which I've never seen anybody got hit by the water from the cannonballs, but we did. Uh, we end up going um, on the ride. Everything's great. Get off the ride, and we say, well, you know, we got one more fast pass we got to get to. Let's go ahead and head over to Thunder Mountain and ride that. Great. I, you know, I haven't eaten in hours. It's not a big deal at this point. Like, I'm kind of over it. I'm not really all that hungry. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to get a turkey leg and it's going to be so good. For those of you that don't know me, if I'm ever in a bad mood, there are two things that will brighten my day. Number one, a turkey leg from Disney. Number two, a Mickey Pop from Disney. My family will tell you that that is like the pinnacle of happiness for me. When I'm eating one of those, it's like it all goes away. 
Everything is perfect. As we go on the ride. We have a great time. Uh, we went Facebook Live on that one. If you saw that, that explains that. Me and Frank ended up having to ride together, which, you know, looked pretty awkward. Not to mention Frank, when sitting next to me on this ride, the bar did not touch his waist by about this much because he's obviously much farther along in his diet than I am with his training for marathons. So Frank almost died. Um, he did make it though. It was funny though because we would go over the flat straight parts, hands would be up, and then when we made the turn, Frank would grab on because he thought he was going to fly out because the bar was not even holding him. It was awesome. So, we get off the ride. I'm excited because we're going to go get the greatest snack, in, or dinner in this case, in the whole wide world, which is the delicious turkey sam sandwich, the turkey leg. We walk up, you can smell them in the air. It's just, oh, like it's, uh, my mouth is salivating even thinking about it right now. We walk up and it's closed. Literally, you can still smell them. The cart is there. It is covered. They're gone. It had just closed. Frank is busting out laughing at this point because he knows that I have not eaten the entire day. And I was so excited about these chicken wings. Now I want this chicken or turkey leg I can't even have that either. Frank is dying laughing. Janet is dying laughing. Morgan is dying laughing. And even the kids are getting in on it. Whatever, I'll be okay. I'm, I'm gonna, you know, get on through it and make the best of it. So Frank reminds me that Gaston's is up, up the way. And Gaston's has like this meat hunk of ham, which is almost as good as the turkey leg. They also have frozen uh, apple juice drinks. I can't even explain them. They are delicious as well. So I'm thinking, hey, it'll be all right. I'm gonna go up the way. I'm gonna get this sandwich. I'm gonna get this drink. Everything's gonna be cool. No, it's not gonna be cool. We start walking up. I notice the doors are closed. Typically the doors are open. I think, well, you know, it's been raining. Maybe they closed it because maybe, you know, it was blowing in the door. So me and Frank go in. There's nobody at the register. There's nobody in line, but the door was unlocked. The lady comes out from the back and goes, sorry, we're closed. At which point I look at Frank and he's doing this. Yeah, that's, that's my friends for you. <laughs> I haven't eaten all day. It is now probably nine, nine thirty at night. I am now to the point where it's like, I don't even care. So me and Frank start walking and <laughs> we come out of the building and they're like, you didn't get anything? I'm like, no, they're closed. Janet starts laughing. Morgan's laughing. Like everybody's having a great time at my expense, which was fine because I'd be laughing at them too. So I say, okay, well, let's go get some popcorn. Camden had one, been wanting some popcorn. I could at least get some popcorn and then get something, you know, on the way home. We start walking. I don't know how many of you guys follow this whole trail we're taking, but we walk a little bit down the ways towards uh, the Dumbo ride, which always has churros and always has popcorn. We get there and they are closing up. They literally have a trash bag that is full of the leftover popcorn and they are throwing it in the trash. Frank is practically crying at this point. He's laughing so hard. We come up with the thought that we may have died in a car wreck on the way there, right? Now follow this story. And that everybody else is in heaven and I am in hell. And what I mean by that is, is everybody else's heaven was being able to watch me suffer through a whole day at what I thought was my favorite place on earth, not be able to eat for eternity. So we come up with this whole elaborate thing that that's what's going on in my life and everybody else is enjoying themselves greatly. So Frank is nice enough to ask the ladies, he goes, what, what's open? Like, why is this closing like in sequence? And we find out that the restaurants close from the back of the park to the front of the park in like a sequence. So as we're moving, they are closing. So what it looked like was, is that they saw me coming and they shut them things down, which is how it kind of went. So Frank is laughing hysterically, but at this point I'm dying. My daughter wants popcorn, so I make it the reason that I have to run to the next stop, which is in uh, Tomorrowland. I, I was going to get popcorn, but all the popcorn made my bones, and someone on the popcorn she blew the whole bag of popcorn away. How big was the bag? That big. And they wouldn't let you have any? Yeah, they were all full. 
How could they do that to a superstar like you? I can't go. We're writing a letter. Yeah, that's why we're getting something else. All right, what are we getting? Uh, I do not know. All right, we'll see. Yeah. Say bye to everybody. Bye. So we get to Tomorrowland. There is a line, folks, let me tell you, because this is the last popcorn stand that is open inside the park except other than Main Street. We have a fast pass for Buzz Lightyear, so this is all going to work out. We stand in the line, and fortunately for me, this is where the hunger story would end, but you would be wrong. Colin. Hi, guys. Now that we finally saw popcorn, Sam was finally getting started. Oh, yeah. I love popcorn. <laughs> yeah. Bye. See you later. So, my daughter gets the popcorn, which I told her was for her, but I figured we'd be sharing. So, Camden gets it, I get one little bite, and I say, Camden, can I have some of your popcorn? And she says, no. <laughs> I can't make this stuff up. I had literally like one half handful of popcorn. So, Frank's dying, Janice's dying, Morgan's dying. At this point, I've given up, I don't care, I'm done. I'm gonna go to Taco Bell afterwards, I'm gonna eat myself into a slight coma, and then I'm gonna pass out. Well, we get done with the whole trip, we get back to the car, it's now probably 10.30. I have this whole plan in my mind that I wanna to go to Taco Bell. This is the part Frank doesn't know, because I didn't wanna tell him, because I had already had enough of him. So, <laughs> Taco Bell isn't on the way home when I look at the GPS, but what I do know is on the way home is I do know there's a Chick-fil-A, and I do know there's a Wendy's. And I figure, hey, one of those I'll stop at. So I take my way down there, I go to the Chick-fil-A, and wouldn't you know it, it is Sunday. I forgot it's Sunday. It was the holiday weekend. I was thinking, hey, there's no work tomorrow. Tomorrow's Sunday, so today's Saturday. I'm gonna enjoy Chick-fil-A. Broke literally my heart. Good news is, Wendy's is next door. It's not good news. <laughs> so, Wendy's drive through because evidently everybody wanted Chick-fil-A and forgot, has a line that is 1,200 miles long. As we know, if Chick-fil-A has a 1,200 mile line, yeah, you'll get through that thing in about five to 10 minutes. Wendy's has that long of a line, you most likely will be there tomorrow for breakfast. So I don't even try. I mean, at this point, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna hit home and I'm just gonna go home, drop the, uh, Camden and Morgan off, and I'm gonna go back to Taco Bell and I'm gonna get it. I drive past the one in Titusville, which Morgan does not know this either, because I just, at this point, I, I was over it. Like, it was like, okay, my life is a living heck at this point, and I'm over it. As I'm driving into Titusville, I look to my right to the Taco Bell. All the lights are off, they're closed. I don't know why they're closed. I didn't pull in there. I didn't care to pull in there. I'd had enough. Like at this point, it was like, God, are you playing tricks on me? Do you hate me? Is this, is this really hell? Is Frank, is he right? Is this their heaven? Is this my hell? So I get back to the house. Everybody goes up to bed and I'm like, no one is going to stop me now. It is 12 o'clock at night. I cooked myself a full box of spaghetti a full thing of spaghetti sauce, meatballs, and eggplant parmesan. That's right. I took it upon myself to fix the situation. <laughs> and I ate myself into a food coma and passed out. It was one of the worst but funniest best days of my life. Frank actually said it's probably one of the best days of his entire life. I believe that because he was laughing his ass off. And Janet, I'm sure, had a great time too. And you know, typically I'm a pretty lucky person. It all came to a screeching halt that day and time. Needless to say, I will never, ever go back to Buffalo Wild Wings again. Their service is terrible. Their food is okay. That's if you get it, which I did not. I don't know how that place stays in business, and what I found out is Arby's bought it. You would think that might make it a little bit better, but what's going on? In fact, 
I want to somehow get this to Buffalo Wild Wings. I want this video to make it to them. So if you could, please like and share. I know I say that all the time, but I feel like this one needs to have some legs and get to Buffalo Wild Wings and have them explain to us in a reply video, this is why we are so dang slow. Because it's not just that time. Now, I mean, everybody here, I'm sure, can agree that Buffalo Wild Wings and Sonic drive through are the slowest establishments in the entire world and they stay open and it's not like their food's incredible like if it was incredible that would be different but how do these places stay open it is it's a shame that rant could go on for another 20 minutes i hope you enjoyed this story at my expense uh hope you like the new video quality got me a new camera super excited about it um and i hope you guys enjoy the show but remember Go to www.ordinaryguyshow.com. You can check out our weekly show there. You can check out the poll of the week. You can check out Kevin Hates there as well. Uh, get the inside scoop. Send us some questions. Send us some comments. Send us some things you want to hear. But most of all, I want to tell you guys thank you for watching. We grow every week, and it's only because of you. Keep sharing. Keep liking. And I'll see you guys next time. Diggity dog, 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 diggity